Well, good morning, gardeners and homesteaders and everybody alike. It is a fantastic day on our beautiful planet of Earth. And I am here. It's time to get to business, just straight up. We're gonna build this garden bed that I've been talking about that's on a hill or a slope, however you wanna put it. And I'm gonna show you how I do it. And hopefully this will help you out in the future. And um, we'll do that. And then in another video, after I get it filled up with some dirt, we'll come back and put the drip in. So keep an eye out for that in the very near future because once I start, I'm not finished and I'm gonna keep it going as much as possible, as quick as possible. So I build all of my garden beds the same way. And I use two by tens. So this is a two by 10 right in here, which means roughly it's 10 inches by two inches. And then I take and I put these brackets on and I always put the bracket, one bracket on the outside and then one on the inside right here, as you can see. And what this does is if I have to change a bed, like a board out or something in the future, I can just unscrew it and then quickly remove it. So if I had to do this one, I could unscrew all these and just slide it out. Or if this one, I would still have to unscrew the bed totally, but at the same time, I wouldn't have to pull the bed apart. So that's how I do it. You just build a basic box. So this is a four by eight bed and I bought three two by tens and one of them they're both they're two by ten by eight so they're eight feet long each side is eight feet didn't have to cut it and then the other one I just cut it right in half and now you have two four foot sections make a box and then we get down to building for the slope before we go any further in this process I use pressure treated wood and I don't want to hear any comments about the chemicals or anything because they changed the chemicals. There was no arsenic in pressure treated wood as of like sometime in the 1990s, I believe. So it's safe to use. You can look it up on your own, whatever. And it's a lot cheaper than cedar. And honestly, I get roughly with pressure treated in the past, I've gotten like six to eight years out of each bed. So it's not that much of like replacement or anything like that. So once you build your box, you're just gonna drop it on the ground. And then I got this two by four here and I simply lift it up, put it the board underneath, and this just allows for this bed to get mostly even. So if we look, you can see that this two by four is running all the way down the edge of the bed. And then you can take your level you're gonna need a level of some sort. And for some reason, my big level's gone, but this little one's gonna work just fine. And we can put it on the bed. And now we see here that it's not totally level. See the bubble? And what I like to do is I'll just lift it up and say, okay. That's how much more the back end of the bed needs to be in order to be 100% level. That's, I mean, we have to remember this isn't we're not building a house we're not building a structure we're building a garden bed it's okay if it's off a little bit not to worry but to have it you know this is a two by four underneath which really is three and a half inches instead of four they just kind of round up so in, to have it four inches off because that was an, about another half inch that's way off and that's a huge slope but that little bit that we have there maybe a quarter to a half an inch that's not much and it's gonna be okay. And I actually went around to all my other beds and did it and it's just about the same because the ground's not totally perfect. Now there is a couple things we can do if you choose to do so. And I'll walk you through that. I'm not gonna do it, but you can, you can do it if you really wanna get it like perfectly level. So we have to remember this is a fair amount of weight so it will end up sinking into the ground a bit, but all sides of it. But this side in particular, because this is on the higher end, you could dig down underground, you know, that amount to get it level. And then the whole thing will kind of set just right. Now I'm not gonna do that, but that is definitely a possibility if you really wanted to do it. Here, you have this angle that comes up. And so we can see that it's about roughly an inch here to four inches back there. Now this is where it's gonna get a little tricky. We're going to have to cut a piece of wood for it and I'm going to show you how I do it and how, you know, you're welcome to do it, get the measurement and everything. But once we get this bed set into place like this, then you can just leave it on propped up on that backboard and you don't even really need a measurer anymore or measuring tape. I call them measurers. 
You don't really need that anymore. We can just trace and cut. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. So once we get that, then we're good. So let's get the angle on that board and then we're gonna go cut it. All right, this is just a two by four that we have here and we can easily take it and we're just gonna set it up on the inside like this. And you can't really see the gap anymore. And I mean, honestly, as of right now, you could technically leave this this way. You would have a gap underneath, but I mean, if you wanted to, it wouldn't really matter, right? You just kind of screw this in and call it a day. But we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and cut this wood and try and slide it up underneath and see how our skills have progressed over the years. So once we put it like this, you're going to get your pencil and we're going to come down and you're just going to trace right along this edge here. But you want to get it pencil so it's kind of like up in the crack a little bit. Because remember, if it's too big or anything, we can just move some dirt away and put it in there. It'll actually fit a little bit better. But we're going to go ahead and just trace it on down. My son chewed the eraser off. I borrowed his pencil, I hope he doesn't get mad. It's kind of tough because it's really small up here, but you just do the best you can. You really want to get up in the front. You want to get as much as you can because that's where you're going to start your cut, theoretically. I don't know if you can see very well, but there is a definite line and we're just going to come back and trace over it as much as we can. Because once you're cutting this, you definitely want to know where your saw is going to go. And then we know that this is going to be the top side, which is the waist side. So we're just going to put an X here. So that tells us that, hey, this is the waist side. Now, hopefully, maybe this will work on that other angle, the waist wheel, but I doubt it will. And you also see how this wood right here is kind of bunged up and not good. If you don't, you want to try and eliminate that if possible. Now, if I can use this for both sides, I'll definitely use it, but it's better off just to go ahead and leave it and remove that. I have another board, but in my effort to be as sustainable as possible, I would rather just cut one board. You know what I'm saying? So let's go cut this thing and um, see if it's going to fit. Fingers crossed, everybody. Quick safety note, everybody, please wear eye protection. I got a shard of metal in my eye when I was younger, doing a job not wearing sunglasses or any kind of glasses, and it almost leaked all the fluid out of my eyes. So be careful, I have to protect it or else it'll get worse. But just make sure that you are wearing some kind of eye protection. Even if you don't think you need it, you need it. So here we go. So I just got it started here, but you just take it and you're gonna run it right down the line. And remember, it doesn't need to be perfect. And I don't have a sawhorse back here, so I'm just gonna do the best I can and run it right on this pencil line. There you go. That should fit. If you're not good with a saw or something, don't worry about it, man. Again, this is, this is a garden. This is what it's supposed to be. But remember one thing. When you go to put this in, the flat edge, the factory edge, goes down. So as long as you get that straight, you'll be good. Now, truth be told, I had done this other side before, but cutting the wood's the same. So let's see how it fits in here. Here's a moment of truth. Look at that. Not bad. It ain't great, but it ain't bad. So I'll show you why it's not great. You see right here is gonna be the, the truth teller. You see on the bottom how we have this little gap. So if we pick it up, you just have a little itty bitty gap. But truth be told, I don't think that's the end of the world. I mean, it's, it's gonna have to because this is all the wood I have. And then going all the way through, just slide this in. And now you have a, let's just call it garden level bed. And what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna come through and then we're gonna attach this board to this one. And there's a couple ways to do it, but first I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other side and then I'll come back and I'll attach these and show you how I'm gonna do it and give you another option that's easier. So 
not much to my surprise, but thankfully both sides fit, no issues there. So now we're gonna attach the board to the, the bottom frame to the top frame. Okay, now remember, if you're just doing this on the flat ground, you just build this top box and you drop it, you're good to go. I mean, I could have been done with this in 15 minutes, but this takes a little bit more time and that's all right, we, we'll get to it. But um, I'm gonna use just screws to put this in and it takes, it's a little bit of a technique that if you do a job like this, let's say, I'll probably put on here three screws and on each side and then on the back, I'll probably put five. So you'll get used to it, but um, this is a way where you don't have to buy any more product. I did have some extra screws, which they're a little long, but they're gonna work. Um, so we're gonna toenail these in. All right, now I'll show you how to toenail them and then I'll go through and I'll tell you another way that you can do it. It's a lot easier, but it's definitely gonna cost you probably about, I'd say 15 to 20 more dollars, which, you know, every penny counts in my mind. So what toenailing is, is we're basically going to shoot the screw at an angle to go in and then pull this board up to the other one. So I already put one in on the other side, but we're going to do this one here and then I'll go through and do the rest. But these screws are a little bit long. These are three, three and a half inch screws. And you can see that it's plenty to go in. And if we don't want it to pop out the bottom, so you don't want to do it low because you don't want to blow out. And you don't want to hit it like right on the edge because it'll blow out here. So we're going to bring it up. And we'll say we're going to go in right about here. Kinds of ways you can do it. What I do is I go in a little bit. And then I back it out. And then you push the screw up like that. And then you start digging down. All right, you guys are gonna have to excuse the drill change. My battery died, piece of crap. But once you get it going down in the direction you want, you, now's the time to make sure that this board's gonna be straight. And so we're just gonna push it out a little bit. You really need three hands sometimes, but you don't have them. And I'm gonna push this up and then just And there you go, it's in there. And that's how you toenail. Thing that I had to do that will help you real quick is when I was putting the screw in, it would create a gap. And so what I did, I took this piece of scrap wedge here from the other one and I just wedged it up underneath. So when I screwed it in, it would keep that board up and have it butting up next to the other one so it doesn't create as much of a gap. But you can see, we now have a garden bed. I mean, truth be told, if you got a gap in there, it's not a big deal. What you could do is take some, um, like get a bag of dirt and then just like staple gun around that gap, some of the plastic from it, and then it would keep the soil in. It's not a big deal. And even if you didn't do that, I mean, you're gonna get a little bit of soil loss, but I mean, whatever. We now have a garden bed. Now, the thing that will help save you some time, but not money by any stretch of the imagination and attaching those bottom pieces in is you can get these little straps that, I mean, they essentially just look like these. They're not brackets. They're just like, if you just cut this off, it'd just be this right here. And you could straddle this board and then just shoot it in no problem. It would be a hell of a lot easier to do but I mean, honestly, this is the way I look at it. And I didn't learn how to toenail screws until I redid my chicken coop. And I had to do a ton of them. But if you think about it, like we had to, I think I probably did 60 to 70 toenails in that project. That would have cost us a couple hundred dollars in um, those little straps. So this saves money, saves. And I had these leftover screws so, I mean, once you start doing these things, it builds up. And I know you may not be, you know, a lot of people watching this may not be very comfortable doing woodworking stuff. And that's why the garden's so great. Working around the homestead and the garden is it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be level. It doesn't have to be beautiful. I mean, look, this bed right here, it's all nice and shiny, but I replaced all these last year and look at them. I mean, they're just gray pieces of wood, whatever. 
It's not about what's in, what's holding the dirt. It's about what's on top of it. That being said, we have successfully built a garden bed on a slope. And I mean, there's no other way around it. If you look at it, it's clearly been leveled to an extent. And I may, before I fill it, I may come in and just dig a little trench right up against the front just to kind of sink it in a little bit. But over time, this is gonna sink right in the ground. I think these beds right here, when I did them, I think when I replaced them, they had sunk into the ground by almost an inch. So, I mean, it, it kind of is what it is. It's gonna get in the ground, but if I can get this side a little bit of a head start, maybe, I don't know. I'm not overly concerned about it. And the next step is the bottom. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line it with cardboard. I'm not gonna use any kind of method, any kind of term. I'm just gonna put cardboard on the bottom simply just to stop the weeds from being able to grow all the way up through. And I mean, that cardboard will stay on there. It'll probably stay on the bottom for six to eight months and nothing's gonna grow through it. At that time, it'll kill everything off. The chickens have already worked that over. But you could come in to a patch of grass, drop a couple layers of cardboard, wet it, fill it with some dirt. And you're not gonna have any problems. Uh, I don't like to put sticks in it because they take a really long time to break down. I may if, well, I'm not actually gonna do it because I won't get to it by then, but if the leaves were falling and it was actually fall, I'd probably throw some leaves in the bottom just to make myself feel better. But I don't think it makes much of a difference because I'm gonna be adding mulch and, you know, mulch and compost and soil and everything else to it. So sometime within the next couple days, roughly, I'll come out and I'm gonna get soil and put in it. I'm not gonna do a video about that because it's literally just me shoveling sh soil. But then what we're gonna do, so be sure you subscribe for this, is we're gonna come through and I have to dig out this trench right here and tap into this um, water line for the drip irrigation. And I'm gonna have it come out and then I'm gonna tee it off. So I have one line going into this bed and then I'll have one blank for when this one is built. And this one's gonna be built the exact same way. There's gonna be nothing different. So probably won't do a video about that one, but that's how we're gonna add two more beds to our growing space for next year. And we're gonna get into the double digits for raised beds. Pretty happy about that, honestly. I'm excited to grow more food next year. And um, this bed right here is going to be used for garlic and onions. We have to have that bed for garlic and onions. I picked this spot first because it gets the most sun. It's gonna be ready to grow. In the winter time when it's cold, it'll warm up faster and we can really get some good production going. So I really have to get this done because I've got about roughly a month before I'm gonna plant my garlic and I'm gonna go put them in the refrigerator now for the next month and then I can get that going, get those lines buried for the drip irrigation, and then we're gonna be off to the races. So you got a lot of good things going on here, but if you wanna see the drip irrigation and stuff like that, be sure to subscribe and um, stay tuned. Probably in the next three or four videos, I should have that out, hopefully sooner. Just depends on whenever I get around to getting dirt, because the one thing I do do is I do not and will not put bag dirt in this bed. I will go buy it in bulk and then put it in because I can fill up this whole bed for 30 bucks of bulk soil versus, I mean, you do the math for how many, if each bed is two cubic feet and then this bed right here is roughly 30 cubic feet times the $7 a bag gets very expensive quick. So we're not gonna do that. I may add a bag of in there of like potting soil or something just to get that nice moisture retentive soil in there, but I'm not gonna do anything else other than that. And I may have pieces around here. I'll probably empty out all of my pots and dump those in there and then just get them going. So we'll have stuff in there activating it, but other than that, we're good to go.